Good afternoon. I'm Anita Das from Ibsa Vashi. I'm here to talk about community gardens. Let me start with what inspired me to give a talk on community garden. During this pandemic time, when people are spending more time at home, I found there has been an increased interest on in terrace gardening and indoor plants. Social media like WhatsApp, Facebook are full of pictures of plants and the produce. Some are addressing them are green daughters, others claim as life savers. So this inspired me to give a talk on community garden to show how we are benefited by plants both physically, mentally and environmentally as well. Community gardens are places where people come together to grow food and other plants, to learn new skills, meet other people and be part of the local community. There are four types of community gardens. Like here we see neighborhood garden, residential garden, institutional garden and demonstration gardens. Neighborhood garden are the most common type of community gardens where a group of people come together to grow fruits, vegetables and flowers in the neighborhood. The harvest is shared by the community. Residential gardens are shared by the residents in the apartments, assisted living or senior citizen homes. These gardens are organized and maintained by the residents living in the society. Institutional gardens are attached to either public or private organizations. Examples, schools, hospitals, malls, offices. Now, demonstration gardens. These type of community gardens are for educational or recreational purposes. They offer seminars, presentations, impart knowledge about plants and garden. Now we go to the next slide. Benefits of community gardens. So what are the benefits of community garden? As for me, there are three major impacts of community garden. Benefits to individuals, benefits to community, and benefits to environment. Benefits of community gardening on individuals are incredible, both on the physical and the mental health. Let's discuss physical health benefits first. Now, what are the physical health benefits? Exercise, exposure to sunlight, nutrition, and lastly, develops immunity. Exercise, let's discuss exercise. Gardening involves a lot of physical effort, like digging, weeding, pruning, sowing, plowing. Regular gardening can do wonders for your physical fitness. Whether you are stretching to pick up a bag of fertilizer or bending to sow seeds, Gardening is a great way to burn calories and strengthen your muscles. It is an activity where you use your non-dominant hand, which is good exercise for your brain. It improves mobility and flexibility in senior citizens. And it is beneficial for children to improve their sensory motor skills. Now we come to exposure to sunlight. As you know, we get vitamin D from exposure to sunlight which helps in the absorption of calcium. Calcium helps in building up strong bones in children and prevents osteoporosis in senior citizens. So you see how important it is. Then it comes to nutrition. <clears throat> Gardening is a fantastic way to get people excited about eating fresh and nutritious food. Studies have shown that children involved in community gardening begin to identify and eat vegetables that they would have never considered before. So community gardening mostly operates on an organic model, which means less pesticides and chemical free. As we know how dangerous pesticides and chemicals are to us. Next is immunity. It develops immunity. How? Studies have shown that locally produced fruits and vegetables have reduced asthma rates in children. 
because children are able to consume manageable amount of local pollens and develop immunity. Gardening also exposes them to non-pathogenic bacterium in the soil called Mycobacterium vacuum, which activates the infection fighting T cells and cytokines. In this way, it increases the immunity. Now we go to the next slide. Yes. Now let's discuss the mental health benefits. Therapeutic benefits of community gardening extend beyond physical health, from relaxation and stress relief to mental and emotional well-being. Gardening is increasingly being used for the prisoners and patients in hospitals for their mental well-being. So what we see, like there are many theories which support this, like biophilia and attention restorative. Gardening also improves our mood, moods, it boosts self-esteem, and it helps in reducing symptoms of ADHD, dementia, Alzheimer's, and autistic disease. Now let's discuss biophilia. Biophilia is a term coined by biologist Edward Wilson, which dictates that we are instinctively drawn to connect with other living and growing things. A meaningful connection results in improved mood and concentration. As the relationship flourishes, it helps people to focus on their skills rather than the, their deficits. So gardenings can help nurture one's mind by providing a connection with other living things. It's like similar to having pets. Now studies have also shown that people who spent more time in their natural environment reported greater satisfaction and better health. Now it's attention restorative theory. Second is attention restorative. This theory proposes that exposure to nature is not only enjoyable, but helps us improve our ability to concentrate. This theory is developed by Rachel and Stephen Kaplan, which suggests that people have two types of attention, directed attention and fascination. Directed at attention is limited and can be overloaded by stress causing mental fatigue, while fascination is used to restore our mental order. So fascination is dominant in natural environment, such as garden, which has a restorative quality that affect our concentration level and memory and problem solving ability. Thus, we learn that nature has the capacity to renew our attention after exerting mental energy, like after studying for our exams or completion of our assignment. So you see how important it is to take a walk in the garden after doing a stressful work or sitting in front of the computer for long hours. Next, we come to mood improvement. Okay, <clears throat> exposure to green spaces has been proven to cause a deep in the levels of stress hormones. Even Sigmund Freud, who is known as the father of abnormal psychology, spoke relaxing benefits of gardening. He, according to him, he quotes, the flowers are restful to look at. They have neither emotions nor conflicts. So researchers have suggested that we are predisposed to find natural stimuli, non-threatening, and that exposure to these stimuli has an immediate effect, triggering feelings of enhanced well-being and relaxation. Additionally, the happy hormones like serotonin and dopamine go up when we exercise, dissolving tension, anger, or confusion. Now, another point is that gardening also helps us in venting out our frustrations. How? The gardening involves force and ag aggression activities, such as hacking, weeding, and chopping, which allows people to unleash their anger and frustrations in a controlled environment. One can be destructive in a constructive way, which is very helpful. 
Now let's come to the next point. Bush self-esteem. How does it boost self-esteem? Gardening boosts self-esteem of people by giving them a sense of purpose and motivation. Youngsters with dif learning difficulties or people with high level of anxieties suffer from low self-esteem. So gardening is a great leveling ground for them. And for those with mental problems, being able to contribute to such a meaningful activity can boost confidence and clarity. A simple Simple activity such as being able to monitor the amount of water given to a potted plant or a bed of flowers leads to a greater sense of control. So in this way, it boosts their confidence. Now again, when you invest time and effort in growing plants, you feel a sense of ownership and pride. So this helps you to feel that you belong to that place. So engagement in a meaningful activity is a prerequisite for a good mental health. Now we'll see the last point, how it helps in reducing symptoms of ADSD, dementia, Alzheimer's and autism. Therapeutic gardening can benefit people affected by ADSD, dementia, Alzheimer's. So researchers have found that activities carried out in a green setting reduces symptoms of ADSD as compared to other settings. In a study by the Royal Horticulture Society, it was found that gardening increases children's alertness, concentration levels, and can help to prevent ADSD. Now in senior citizen, gardening has helped to maintain the ability to focus and concentrate. Thus, in this way, delay dementia and Alzheimer's. Autism, now we know that autism is a neurological disorder which interferes with normal brain activities. So these children have communication problems and lack social skills. Now it has been proven that gardening improves their social skills and social self-esteem. Now we come to the next slide. That's a benefits to community. Let's have a look at the benefits to the community garden, to the community. It stimulates social interaction, provides opportunities for intergenerational and cross-cultural connections, knowledge garner and share area beautification. Okay. Stimulates social interaction. Many people talk of never seeing their neighbors or co communicated with them. Community gardening enables the neighbors to communicate by being involved in gardening and that increases social interaction providing a common good. Social interaction is good for your mental health. It promotes a sense of safety, security and belonging. It allows you to confide in others and let them confide. Social interaction also plays an important role in learning. Social skills are one of the most important skills children and adolescents develop and these often serve as predictors of future success like job, emotional well-being, etc. Children and teenagers with well-developed social skills are likely to gain confidence in their abilities to approach situations and complete tasks more successfully. Schools should promote gardening in their premises. Nowadays, we find that due to technology, people don't interact often, even if they are under the same roof. It is very important to communicate, especially during this pandemic time, because person can feel lonely in the midst of a crowd. So it's very important that people should interact. So indoor plants or gardening involving all the family members can be a solution. As you know, in India, in a family, the three generations, the grandparents, parents and the children stay. So this will be very helpful and there will be communication and social interaction between the family members and it will help in the time of pandemic. Now we come to the next point that is provides Opportunities for intergenerational and cross-cultural connections. How? In community gardening, 
we see the generation gap bridged with older and younger generation getting to know, understand and respect each other in new ways as they discover a shared passion in gardening. In India, we find three generations staying under one roof. Gardening can promote a bonding between them and sharing knowledge and experiences. We also get to see people of different religions, races, economic and cultural backgrounds working together with a common goal. So there is a cross-cultural communication which is very good for the society. Now we see, uh, now we have seen how intergeneration is bridging the gap between the generation and cross-cultural connections. Next we come to how the knowledge is garnered and shared. There are experienced gardeners who share their knowledge on types of plants, soil structure, pest control, etc. Knowledge about biodiversity and ecosystem is also garnered. So gardening fosters a sense of community and stewardship of the land and pass on to the next generation. Studies have proven that people tend to eat more nutritious food when they learn about nutrition. So it's, so it's very important. Not only do children learn about gardening, but also learn to be more responsible. They become more creative and confident when they do gardening. So while gardening, children learn that plants can be killed by weed or overwatering and eventually die. This teaches the child that some things sometimes just don't go work out the way they want it. So best thing is try again. So this is a very valuable lesson learned in a light at so now we see how important is gardening for children. Not only becomes, makes them creative and confident and responsible, it also teaches them a valuable lesson. Nowadays, as we see, we find many suicide cases on the rise among students for failing in the exams. So one of the causes is not being able to deal with failure. So gardening can help to help them to realize that trying again is an important lesson. So this is a le lesson learned no matter what. Sometimes things may go wrong, so try again. Next comes area beautification. Of course, the green area and the garden will definitely make the place look more beautiful. But apart from that, it initiates a chain reaction of positive benefits. And residents, they start caring more for their neighborhood. Now we go to the next slide. Benefits to the environment. So moving on, let's look at the benefits of community garden to our environment. Reduces pollution, both air and soil. Prevents soil erosion. Replenishes nutrients in the soil reduces noise pollution, supports beneficial insects and birds for pollination, reduces carbon. Now, but how it reduces pollution? As you know, trees play a vital role in removing pollutants from air by filtering atmospheric pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide through their leaves. They act like lungs of an ecosystem by absorbing carbon dioxide and emitting oxygen. Plants also help to filter chemicals and bacteria from the soil and groundwater through their roots. Now we come to prevent soil erosion. Plants provide a protective cover on the land and prevent soil erosion. Plants slow down the water as it flows over the land and this allows much of the rainwater to soak into the ground. Secondly, roots hold the soil in position and prevent it from being blown or washed away in monsoon. Now next is replenishes nutrients in soil. Healthy soil is the foundation of a productive and fruitful garden. Now, leaf litter, other organic materials that fall from plants Dead or decaying plants provide nutrients to the soil. And there are also certain type of vegetations which fixes certain types of nutrients in the ground. Like there are yeah, drizzle fixing plants, 
like pulses, legumes, and all. When the plant dies, fixed nitrogen is released and making it available to other plants. Now we come to reduces noise pollution. Vegetation absorbs sound. So the higher the incidence of green space, lesser will be the noise. So we should create a quieter atmosphere. How does it support beneficial insects and birds? It is estimated that one third of the global crops depend on cross-pollination. Without bees and butterflies to aid nature's production process, many crops would die off. Adding local and native plants to the community garden helps pollinators protect our future food sources. So birds are also an integral part of the environment as they help spread vegetative seeds, which is food source for wildlife. So birds are drawn to the garden as it facilitates their habitat. Then we come to how it reduces carbon footprints. So trees absorb, as we know, the trees absorb, store carbon dioxide emissions so that are driving global heating. So planting trees can help in combating global warming. Now, we go to the next slide. Okay. Victory gardens. Now, the community garden we see in the cities today has evolved from a long history. During World War I and World War II, European and American government encourage people to plant vegetable fruits and herbs at private residences and public parks. These were called victory gardens. These gardens not only supplemented the food scarcity due to the wars, but also helped in boosting moral of the people. You can see the victory gardens here during the World War II. The next, this thing, even Elnia Roosevelt, former first lady, had planted Victory Garden on the White House lawn in 1943. You can see the White House lawn they had during the World War II, they had planted garden, Victory Gardens. Now, okay, now we come an interesting personality, that's Ron Finlay, gangster guard. Ron Finlay is law, Sandalin's best based activist and guerrilla guard. He quotes, to change a community, you have to change the soil. And that he has been doing it since 2010. When he planted a produce on an empty parkway, you can see the parkway over here. You can see the parkway here. Between his house and road, it was considered illegal. So Finlay fought back, noting that planting produce on an empty plot in the middle of food desert should not be a punishable act. Thus, prohibitory law was changed. So I would say, where there's a will, there's a way. So he could change the law and he started planting on the parkway. Today, Finlay has helped plant dozens of community garden on empty plots around Los Angeles. He refers to himself as gangster gardener. In his words, gardening is gangster. Drug or robbing is not gangster. Building community is gangster. He is also known for his TED Talks on guerrilla gardening. That is, gardening on the land that is not legally yours. So one of his interesting quotes is, children learn what they need. You see how important it is. The children should learn gardening. Now we'll go to the next slide. Let's see. Okay. This is Let's Move by Michelle Obama. Let's Move is a comprehensive initiative launched by the, by the then First Lady Michelle Obama. It's dedicated to solving the problem of childhood obesity 
within a generation born today will grow up healthier and be able to pursue their dreams. So this was initiated by Michelle Obama to combat childhood obesity. You can see Michelle Obama with the assistance of local school children started the kitchen garden. You can see the yeah, at the White House. And this was the first major vegetable garden at the White House since Eleanor Roosevelt's Victory Garden during World War II. You can see here how Michelle Obama with this local school children and there's the chef, White House chef also is there. So inspired by the first lady's passion for healthy living, people across the country have revisited to American tradition of starting a vegetable garden at backyard, at school, and around community, and incorporate healthy food into your favorite meals. This you can see in the next slide. So the children enjoying nutritious food, discussing about nutrition, eating fruits with Michelle Obama. See the impact on the children. Okay, now after going to USA, where there is no constraint of land, now we come to Japan, where space is a constraint. Now let's look at some of the modern examples in Japan, where the land for gardening is scarce. Japanese have found truly ingenious ways to bring farming to big cities. This is Persona 2 in Tokyo. In Persona 2, both office workers and hydroponics and soil based farming share common space. In this building, you'll find some interesting. You can see the balconies filled with seasonal flowers and then the orange trees. These are planted on the outer exterior. This is the Persona building. In the next slide, you'll see some of the interiors of the Pesana building. In the building, tomato vines are suspended above conference tables. Lemons and passion fruit trees are used as partitions for meeting spaces. Salad leaves are grown inside the seminar rooms. The main lobby features rice paddy fields. Scissor flowers and orange trees are planted on the balconies to showcase changing of leaves and color to the exterior facility. An intelligent climate control monitors humidity, temperature and breeze to balance human comfort during office hours and optimize crop growth during after of hours. Now the interesting is food grown here is consumed in the company cafeteria which is popular with employees. One more thing is very important that they have observed that greenery has increased the workers' productivity and improved mental health as well. So communal work of looking after the plants has also increased social interaction and created a strong sense of community. Now I feel we can also promote such ideas in our corporate offices to foster team building and create a strong sense of community here are some of the rooftop gardens. Now they have as there's a space constraint. So there's some of the rooftop gardens in Japan, Tokyo. These are all rooftop ones. So in this slide, you can see some of the ideas how to have it in the rooftop, like in residential living uh, apartments and all. You can have such garden ideas. Community garden in India. So now let's discuss community garden in India. Though India is primarily an agricultural nation, people have been migrating to cities for want of employment and opportunities. The cities are growing on a mega scale and struggling for want of area. The result is a high density population growth in cities with people restricted to apartments and living in polluted environment. The lifestyle of the urban people has taken a downturn in terms of health and happiness. 
so community gardening in rural areas could help in arresting this migration from rural areas possibilities to establish community gardens in indian cities now at knowing the benefits of community gardening we can try to promote this in indian cities few possibilities could be turning wastelands to community garden residents welfare association community garden in institutions and through cooperatives now let's discuss turning wastelands to community garden cities have lots of wasteland that turn into garbage dumps eventually government can promote community garden for the well being of the neighborhood wastelands can be leased to a group of interested citizens even we can take help of sponsors and organization with expertise in gardening so this is how it's done next is through residential resident welfare association this concept can be introduced in housing societies or people living in apartments the common area or rooftop can be used by the resident for community garden you can see in this picture you could see the terrace garden of mr siddharth sikdar from pune he is known as the garlic man in his locality when he started terrace gardening his neighbors objected to it but he continued when the price of garlic shot up to rupees 300 kg he would send garlic to his neighbors and that to free that's how he motivated his neighbors for terrace gardening he is ron finley of india you can say now next we'll discuss community garden in institutions institutions like hospitals schools and corporate offices can benefit from community garden gardens studies show that well designed gardens in hospitals could reduce patients anxiety and stress accelerate recovery and promote a sense of well being so we should encourage hospitals to promote gardens in their premises next gardening in schools that will also help children in building up social skills teamwork cooperation and environmental awareness at a young age i have already discussed the benefits of community gardening in corporates when we discussed the persona o2 building in japan and there are also many urban horticulture initiatives in india which is taking which has plans to introduce rooftop gardening in schools so like one is urban horticulture initiative of chennai has plans to introduce rooftop gardening in schools its aim is to educate students and encourage students to do gardening at home so there are some programs which we find it's going on in india now next we come to through cooperatives like minded people come together and form cooperatives that work on community gardening this can be applied to both urban and rural areas okay apart from that we find in recent times the breed of urban farmers in india is increasing due to growing interest in agriculture they allow urban dwellers to grow to become farmers by renting patches of organic farms to grow and harvest their crops with the guidance from seasoned organic farmers there are some examples you'll find like indian superheroes in coimbatore when i'm talking about community gardening how could i miss our own ibsa learning garden this was initiated by our mentor dr vijaya chakravarti on the 1st april 2017 people from different fields 
like physicists, nuclear scientists, microbiologists, ethnobotanists, nutritionists came together and formed LG. Each member of the LG pursued learning and did online course and member enrichment programs on gardening. IFSA members along with friends of trees and residents of Navi Mumbai did the plantation of different sections on June 5th, the World Environment Day, the same year 2017. In a period of three years since inception, IFSA Learning Garden could reach out to society through exhibition and tours. You can see the pictures over here. The gardening has been designed as an outdoor oasis of knowledge referred to as Leaving Plant Museum. This encompasses designated areas from the grassland to deserts, geographic distribution from Deccan Plateau to Western Ghats, from orchids to environmental barometer bryophytes, are found in a living museums. There are sections of perennial plants, primitive plants, and many other flowering plants too. There's a sensory garden and butterfly garden for children. To entertain and enlighten their young minds and spark curiosity in a natural world. Children are allowed to touch, smell and taste and see this colorful flowers. We conduct tree walks, sessions on child wild food cooking, beverage botany and educational visits from young and adults. Some of the programs like Goko's, Science of Growing, Cooking, Eating for school children was very much appreciated. Buddy programs with grandparents and friendship programs with children from Germany, Russia and US. You can see some of the slides over here. Activities going on, learning garden of IFSA. Now I've come to the conclusion of my presentation. I would like to emphasize that diet, physical activities, mental health, and social connections are needed for a healthy life. Absence of one of these would adversely affect your life. They are like the four legs of a chair. If you do not have one of them, you are out of balance. So community gardening is a one-stop solution for all of the above. Now we go to the next slide to see the References. Some of the references. I thank you all for patiently listening to my presentation. Thank you.